No, we're not. We just and we don't even homework. know where we're at. And I'm, I'll walk away after I finish annoying all of you guys. Oh, you can't annoy us, baby. We too spiritual for that. Okay, good. This so is then, the missing so book. Then, good. I'm glad I won't annoy you. So then I'm going to say what I have to say. So not only are we the Hebrew Israelites, our skin, and you can see that I've been mixed. episode is going to be entitled we are not our hebrew israelites 
America is not Jerusalem, but it is Babylon the Great. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And again, the title is Hebrew Israelites. We are not in Jerusalem, or America is not Jerusalem, but it's Babylon the Great. Okay, and um, <clears throat> basically this is a response to a video. And I included the video in this lesson, which you just saw on the screen, was an excerpt, or the, the whole video. From the uh, this past weekend's camp from the GMS Orlando brothers, their channel is GMS in the Truth Orlando. All right, you should su subscribe if you have it. And they put up a, a um an excerpt from their camp, or either before it or after it. The video is entitled "Eve is Bugged Out and Still Lost." All right, and it was just a young so-called black woman. Okay, and from what I can see, with a bunch of spirits on her. Okay, smoking and whatnot. At first, really, when I looked at her, you know, I I thought for a minute it was my my you know I want to say ex, but a wife. They look a lot alike, you know. It fell out of the truth some years back, but she's a lot younger. And you know, the former lady is a bit older and a lot you know a little bit shorter than that too. So, but a lot of similarities nonetheless. Anyway, the so-called black woman that's um. You know, like she said, she's been watching the Israelites or whatever. And these brothers did, you know, excellent job dealing with her because <laughs> you could tell it could win either way. You know, they dealt with her with, um, you know, with patience and with subtlety. They weren't really trying to even really be bothered with her. She just wasn't going to go away till they heard her, you know, whatever she wanted to say. And she made a lot of erroneous statements, you know, holding a cigarette up there, whatever, talking. And she said that her her father's from the tribe of Judah. But her mother. <clears throat> her father's from the tribe of Judah, but her mother is a, a you know white lady, I suppose. But anyway, the brothers informed her. Y'all saw the video. Anyway, what I want to do is just deal with a couple of things. Now, the first thing I was on the comment board, and I left her um left her. I left the brothers <laughs> a comment on the comment board, and I said it right here, Jimmy, uh, South Carolina. She needs guidance, but can't shut up. This is what happens when you hear the gospel and watch the videos, but don't repent. And I put a scripture there and we'll actually look at that scripture. And we'll read it. And this is exactly what it is. Because you got this a lot among the Israelites, people that watch the videos. And she said, I study you guys. I watch, you know, I watch or whatever. And the brother asked her, have you repented? And, and I don't know if she, she said, yeah, she, some by her sin, she walk in grace and all that. When you see, hear people start talking about, they walk in grace. They really mean they're going to just do whatever the hell they want to do. That's what she means. That's what they mean. Usually they say they're going to just do whatever they want to do because nothing matters because they're under grace. And you start to get a bunch of demons on you because the most high is giving you an opportunity to repent by showing you the gospel. But it's going to come a time where the door in your mind is going to be shut if you don't repent and be converted. It's just not about repenting. It's also about being converted. And let's go and look at it now. And then we'll get into, you know, what she said about, you know, this being Jerusalem. So this is uh, Acts 3. And we'll start at verse 17. It says, Acts 3 and 17. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which the Most High before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Hamashiach should, should suffer, excuse me, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So you're not only just repent, because if you repent, let's say, yeah, I know I'm an Israelite, you know, whatever, but you just keep on living the same way you've been living. And what is the point? As another scripture says, uh, what a valid, let me see if I can find it real quick. Just bear with me one minute. I knew these other precepts were going to come out. I'm not going to do, you know, make this video real long, Lord willing. But there's certain things we will bring out, right? Um, let's see here. Availeth. Y'all just bear with me here. All right, and I, I screwed up. <clears throat> well, maybe not. All right, so I think the scripture I want is in the Apocrypha. It says, yeah, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 34, 25. 
and we can just go right to it if we can. It says, he that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? Right. If you wash yourself from sin, not you wash yourself, but if you, you know, repent, but then you go and do the same things. And what was the point? He that washes himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? If you know you're going to just keep touching the dead body, what's the point of trying to wash your hands? You're going to go right back and touch it. And it's almost like what I say, and I liken it, you know, somewhat to when you watch uh, movies and there's an individual that's about to get tortured. And these, you know, people want to know something. They want information from the guy, right? And he says, I'm not going to tell you. I can't give you that info. And then they start to beat the shit out of him, punish him, do all kind of stuff to him just for him to be all beat up and mangled up and teeth broke out and fingers cut off just to turn around and then tell him. Well, what was the point of you sitting there taking all that punishment if you knew you was going to eventually cave in and tell anyway? So what you should have done was just told, you know, just told from the beginning. If you know you're going to tell, you should be like, I'm going I'm to I'll tell you, don't cut my fingers off. Don't beat the shit out of me, you know. But anyway, that's what this scripture reminds me of. He that washes himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? Right. And, you know. That's the whole key when, you, when you're dealing with uh, Acts 3. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted. So you got a lot of Israelites that walk around and they say they know the Israelites and they repented, but they didn't convert. They didn't fully turn their lives, you know, and not, I hate to say it that way, but that's how we say it. Or that's how, a way you can say it. They didn't fully turn their lives over. They didn't wholeheartedly, you know, come into the truth. They just know of the truth. And it's a, it's a lot of Israelites like this. These are the ones that are on the comment board talking about unity, crying, want all the Israelites to come together. It's because you ain't born again. That's really the key. She's not born again. You see, that's the first mistake that a lot of Israelites make. You're not born again. Now, let's read on here. Re Repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you. So when you go into this word, uh, converted, right? This is the Greek word right here. Strong's G, 1994, epistrepho. Epistrepho. Right, and the word is epistrepho. Be converted. And what does it mean? It says transitively to turn to, to worship to the worship of the true God. Right. You got to The religions of the world are just that they're they're The gods of the nations are idols. That's not the true worship. So when you find out you're an Israelite, you're supposed to run <clears throat> with all your might and jump in with two feet. You're not supposed to be wavering and wasting time because that's all that means. Your, your mind is open, but then you got your, that door in your mind will also allow more demons to come in. It says the cause to return to bring back. How do you, and I've been saying it a lot. How do you return someplace you've never been to? You don't. You don't return. See, so this is for the Israelites to the love and obedience of the Most High. So it's not just, the, you know, saying about it's about love, but also to the obedience. You have to do what the Lord commands. And that's the part of, you know, conversion. Here it says to turn oneself. To turn oneself about, turn back, to return, turn back, come back. See that? So you have to come back to the Lord, to the Lord, excuse me. <clears throat> now, also, I would like to read you a couple of these different versions. Now, show you that how these things go off. The scripture says, and this is the New King James Version. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So the key word here is converted. But if you read some of these other ones, the NLT says, now repent of your sins and turn to the most high. So it's not giving you the right indication of being converted. And all of these are like that, except when you get right here. This is a good one. NASB 20. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And really the best is repent and be converted. That's really the best one. I also went and looked up, and this is interesting. Convert 
from the online etymology dictionary. <clears throat> this is the word convert, the verb, circa 1300, a change or turn from one religion to another. Now they put it here, especially to Christianity, which is which is false. Christianity is is uh the Bible is not about Christianity. It's about the Hebrew Israelites, and our religion is the true worship or the pure worship of the Almighty through His Son Yahweh Shai. All right, so it says they change or turn from one religion to another. So when you find out about the Israelites, you can't just say you were Israelite by blood and then but you're not by religion no you're supposed to jump in you're supposed to say i'm an israelite now that's what that's what you're supposed to do and you're supposed to put in practice the things that the brothers the prophets are telling you about you can't and that's a bad habit that jake has men and women you'll say okay you brothers is right so that right there is acknowledging that we're the prophets because we were sent but then you won't do what the lord said to do and this girl got all kind of good lord you know and that's just another thing. You know, we know about that. All the weave. And then you had these little floozies walk by. You can see they look, they want attention. But nobody's paying them no attention. So they, <laughs> they felt slighted, little bitches. <laughs> we hate you fucking people, man. Tell you the truth. We, we fucking hate you. Especially you damn women. And we talking about you Babylonian bitches. All right. Anyway, continuing on. Again, a change or turn from one religion to another, especially... You know, especially to the Bible. Let's say that from old French con convert here to turn around, turn towards, change, transform, convert, win over. The truth supposed to win you over. You supposed to convert and turn back to the Lord. And I think that's pretty much what I wanted from that. All right. Um. Well, I like this here. It says the Latin verb was glossed in old English by. I don't know what that says. Anyway, it says to turn, return, general sense of change into another form or substance. Transmute is from late 14th century transitive sense of turn from one use or destination to another. It's from the late 15th century related, converted, converting. Right. You're supposed to go from one religion to another. Whatever you was believing in before, you're supposed to leave off from that and turn back to the true worship of the living God. And that's the reason why you Jays get so many damn demons on you. you no, know, you get even more demons when you so you think that you find out about the truth, you halfway there. Nah, that's the opening that you get from Yahweh Shai. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So you when when you hear when you hear the truth, you're supposed to convert. Because that door that's open in your mind will allow more demons to come on your ass if you don't act. So this is John 3, 3 and 3. He said, Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. So you ain't going to make it out of here on this go around. You got to come back in the kingdom as a baby, You, but you won't be in you won't be in the flesh you're in now with a new body, you know? This you're gonna be your same spirit, but you're gonna have to be reborn all over again. This is John three and seven. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So you must be born again. You must repent and be converted. All right. And I just wanted to mention that real quick. <clears throat> now I want to go on. So you know she mentioned something about um she know where she is. We in Jerusalem right now. She's in the Hebrews like don't know where we are. Yes, we do prophetically. It's not in the scriptures. And the brother said the right thing. Spiritually, we in Jerusalem, sure. Because Jerusalem is a people before us a place, but physically, we're not. We are in a place known in the Bible as Babylon the Great. Prophetically and scripturally, it was it was prophesied. And we're not going to Jerusalem, right? Back to the Holy Land until our Savior comes and takes us there. Now let's let's deal with a few scriptures, and this is gonna be quick. So, first off, and Brother Yuan. Mentioned this on the comment board, Brother Juan from GMS Dallas. I mean, a matter of fact, I can show it. He mentioned this on the comment board <clears throat> right here. GMS Yuan, the cursed state we would be in captivity in a place neither we nor our fathers have known. And that's true. The scriptures say that, but let's read it. Right here, Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From one from the one end of the earth, even until the other, 
and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And just to put it out there, I have heard a doctrine where Israelites say that America is the homeland. America is the holy land. You know, there's doctrines out there with these wicked Israelites, these wacky weirdos. They do teach something like that because they don't want America to be destroyed. They love it here. But also, too, a lot of them subscribe to the Book of Mormon. Here it is, the same book that's telling you that you curse because you got dark skin. Right. They don't they don't believe that part, but they believe the part saying that this is where the deliver. I don't know what the, what what exactly the doctrine says, but they, they was going off. They're going off. Because prophetically, the Israelites are supposed to be scattered and remain scattered until the Savior comes and takes his people home. And we, and we actually read that. So this scripture told us that we were scattered. Now, when you go read in Revelation 11, right? And it's talking about the Israelites right here in verse 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now you got a bunch of Christians that say that's talking about the Holy Land, Jerusalem. Well, no, we can't be scattered and be in the homeland at the same damn time. So what we were scattered to the main place is uh, Babylon the Great, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And as a matter of fact, when you go back to Deuteronomy 28, and you read down to verse 68, it talks about that place we would go to and how we would get there. So we read about the scattering here. But in verse 68, it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right? So this place we will be sent to is a spiritual Egypt, as we just read in Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So it's a spiritual Egypt is what it what is referring to. Okay. So this is the same place we will be delivered from. This is how we know we're not in Jerusalem. We're in exile. And let's just go right to it. And, and we're going to end the video pretty abruptly. This is Jeremiah 3 and verse 17. This is what it says. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Right. So when the Israelites hear the call, that were the Israelites, spiritually, Jerusalem now, well, we're literally Jerusalem too, the people before us a place, but they're going to hear that. And they, this is, this is what's gathering them. It says, neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil heart. Listen, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. What's the house of Judah? The Southern kingdom, Judah, Levi, and Benjamin shall walk with the house of Israel, the 10 tribes. So the elect from these are going to, you know, um, well, let's read it. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north. See, so we still exile, but the Savior comes and he takes us back to our land. So we're not there now. If that was the case, the scripture would say the Lord will leave you in Jerusalem where you at. And she talking some madness, you know, some wacky shit about the map is upside down. I've also heard that the map is. They changed the map. You know, David Banner said some madness like that. I saw a video about that weeks ago, I mean, months ago. He was saying, if you look at the map upside down, really, he said really that uh, <clears throat> the Northern Hemisphere is really the Southern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere is really the Northern Hemisphere and all of that. I mean, the more I look at this video, the more that, that girl looks just like somebody from the past. Wow, that's amazing. But it's not her. Just, you know, just, <laughs> it's not her. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have, that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. So the Israelites are going to come out of captivity, out of exile, going back to the Holy Land. So we're not there now because we're still in the, in the uh, Roman Empire. And we're not supposed to go back you know, to the Holy Land until the Roman Empire falls. This is Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper. And this king is Jehovah Shai, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days 
Judah shall be saved. What does that mean in his days? When he's here, ruling on the throne, it says right here, the Lord's going to raise up a king which shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. When you read Re uh, Revelation 19, 11, it says, or yeah, Revelation 19, 11, he does judge and make war. So he's got to execute the judgment and bring the justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. See, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, and this, this Egypt is speaking of the first, the first Egypt, you know, that first uh, <clears throat> the Egypt where Moses was with the plagues, you know, and all of that. So people are going to stop talking about the old Exodus. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. And we're in the north country now. America, Babylon, the greatest, where the greatest deliverance will be, and from all countries, whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. See, so we're not in our land now. The Lord's going to come and take us from this land to our land. And it's even in Ezekiel. Is it Ezekiel 37? Let me see real quick before we end the video. <clears throat> even Ezekiel 37. Um. You know what? This is a good one too. Uh, yeah, this is a good one too. But I, I really would like to read Baruch. Let's go to Baruch. So we're gonna go to the Book of Baruch. See, in exile, we have to wake up to the truth, repent, and be converted. Why do we need? If we already in our, if we was already in the Holy Land. Why we need to repent and be converted? We would already, we would know that. See, it's a complete cycle that we must go through. We've been scattered. We've been in captivity. We've been asleep. Now we're awake. Now we have to repent and be converted. This is uh, Baruch 2.29. If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. See, we scattered. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. You see that? So we're in the land of our captivities. Let me just check the time real quick, brothers. All right. Still got some time left. So lock you. And let me actually pause this. So lock you. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And shall know that I am the Lord, their power. So in the land of our captivities is where the awakening comes. That's what it means. They shall remember themselves. And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I give them a heart and ears to hear by way of the Holy Spirit. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. So we have to get the name of the Lord back. We have to, you know, wake up to our heritage and turn back and uh, rehearse the righteous acts. See, get the name of the Lord and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. That's the repentance and, and the conversion and return from their stiff neck, repentance and from their wicked deeds. Right. That's the repentance for they shall remember the way of their fathers with sin before the Lord. And that is the conversion. The repentance of returning from your stiff neck and wicked deeds. And then remembering the ways of your fathers, that is the conversion. Then what happens? And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be laws of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. See that? So then you go back to the land. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So then we will no longer be driven out of the land. You see, which we are currently right now. We're not there. We're in exile. So, you know, that's it. All right. So, I'm, yeah. So, you know, it was a good video. Entertaining. Right. But, you know, just the mindset of a lot of Israelites. She was bugged out. And a lot of Israelites. And, but at least she knew. She said she wasn't one of the elect. And she's probably not. But you never know. She may wind up, you know, one of the brothers might wind up, you know, scooping her up. Because what did she say? She said, don't please don't forget my face. 
Because she was humble in certain regards. She was a little puffed up. But she was humble at the same time. She said she knows she's not of the elect. Right? Which that that may not be true. But she said, you know, she from the, she's a princess from the tribe of Judah. You know, and, and, and so on and so forth. And she said, please remember her face. And the brother said, we, we'll remember you. <laughs> Especially when Jacob's trouble comes. Because she's going to come running. And women like her. And that's it. So we'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All right? And this is this has been Hebrew Israelites. America is not Jerusalem. All right. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.